Hi everyone, welcome. I'm preparing to check in on an interesting little experiment that's been going on for 123 days now. And that's the experiment where we took a couple of my old t-shirts. They were uh, really worn, full of holes, soiled in places, and it was time for them to go. But instead of going in the trash, they came here into the worm bins. Here in bin number one, we threw in a t-shirt, a Microsoft t-shirt, and the, uh, the bin number two received a Roxio t-shirt. But you would never be able to tell if you looked in there today. I mean, the last check-in, which was 12 days ago at this point, when we last came in to feed them, that was feeding number 15, we saw very, very little left of the shirts. And it's pretty safe to say that what remains is not ever going to be broken down. It's synthetic threads and synthetic materials, um, which includes the, the little tag, the care instruction tag that goes on the back of the neck. The threads plus that tag are pretty much all that remains. And I think the only reason we were kind of prolonging this as not being a completed test yet was because we we thought we saw little tiny fragments of stuff that was not thread, but it was definitely like, you know, the right color and everything like that. I don't think it was just little particles of white food matter that got stuck between the threads. It did seem to me like there was still a little bit of material between the threads in one or two places. Uh, and that was the threads in both systems, if I'm not mistaken. I think we saw scraps of little tiny bits of possibly not yet eaten cotton nested within the, th the interwoven, interlocked threads. And it's interesting because every place where the neck meets the seam that goes down the sleeves as well as the thread that um, goes around the edge of the cuff on the sleeve and I think even maybe around the bottom of the t-shirt too. Every place there's you know just a, a piece of fabric that if it was left um, without being folded back and sewn up it would just have to be like a you know a piece of material that could begin unraveling almost immediately and start self-destructing so the material is all kind of folded back and sewn down and on all the edges and that's where the threads are so I um I am curious to see how things are coming along at day 123 I mean even last time it was kind of hard to say it with a straight face that yeah we've still got more work to do on this experiment I think it was probably safe to say that um, last time the experiment was probably for the most part done but we decided hey it's just for fun anyway there's no you know there's no harm in just continuing on with the test for one more go around and we you know we kind of um, I don't want to say pretended because I think it is true I don't think we're saying anything that's not factual we we just sort of made the decision to continue on with the test and treat those little scraps in between the threads as material that the worms had simply not yet gotten around to completing so technically the test was not done so the real question would be if we were to go scouring through these uncomposted threads and look in between each individual little piece of synthetic thread, would we find any little tiny scraps of something that does not appear to be thread? And this looked a little different here, but it might just be more of the same stuff, just frayed a little bit. It's just so interesting how it actually, in certain places, actually has like the light white color, as if there's really no more work to be done there, and anything related to the composting has sort of just vanished or started just flaking off because there's really no nothing of interest here I mean not that's not um, so true though if you think about it because there's something clearly of interest here because the worms are all in the stuff and it just makes me wonder if the the synthetic material has some sort of a, um, a texture or feel to it that the worms like or just the fact that it's there and they can tell that it's not gonna break down so they kinda huddle around it or something I'm not quite sure what the explanation for that is, but they do seem to enjoy hanging out in this stuff. Or is it just a coincidence that we're finding worms there because there's basically worms everywhere? <laughs> so there's really no avoiding having worms kind of in and out of the thread. But you know, at day 123, I believe it is safe to say that we're going to consider this as a completed test. Maybe even at around day 100, it was not much different from what we see around here so if you wanted to just come up with a sort of a round estimate for how long it might take to compost you know 
uh, a garment, like a simple t-shirt made out of cotton in your warm bin. There again, it probably depends on a whole slew of other variables, obviously the number of worms you've got there and other things. But I think it would be fair to say that it's doable in 100 days or so, depending on probably different variables, probably affecting the actual true amount um, of mileage individuals might get if they were to try the test, but I, um, I think that's probably fair to say. For some reason I always do sort of find myself getting hung up in those little tiny, um, almost insignificant details like, hey, what about the little tiny fragment of fabric that I thought I saw? What do we do about that? You know, perhaps, um, perhaps this test could have been considered as complete long before even 100 days. So, I don't know, whatever. My criteria is just to not be in a hurry. And as long as we're having fun, I think we're being successful in these interesting little tests. So, let's see how bin number one did over here. You know, I didn't write the, the population count down. Because somehow every time I go look at it, it's not even the number itself so much that's interesting when I look at it. It's the fact that these two bins have almost the same exact size populations based on our estimates from each time we put worms into these systems we always took the estimates of all the viewers we averaged those numbers together so mathematically we came up with two individually um, unique numbers and it's just interesting how close they are they're only 10 apart so one of the bins has like you know I don't even remember the numbers you know whatever the first two numbers are let's just say 2300 or something like that 2370 and 2380 or something like that so perhaps I'll just have to flash some sort of a little number on the screen with the actual numbers since I didn't come down prepared with those numbers today so let's uh, let's continue probing through the feeding area here again we almost spent no time after we identified and isolated the the threads from the material here in bin number one probably because we already in a way know that there's nothing of interest to be seen there anymore <laughs> but it's um it is only fair to say let's just quickly check it out as long as we're here especially if we're so near the end of this test i'm wondering if at the end of this video it's time to just remove this stuff or just leave it in perhaps for another round just in case but at that point i don't even know if it's fair to say we're still counting the days we can certainly let the counter in my spreadsheet continue and make reference to how long it's been in the system but as far as um you know the original criteria which was just to compost the cotton i think we're pretty much done at at least 100 days but we can make it sort of official i think today for 123 days which is kind of a cool number and possibly a slightly bloated number might not be truly representative of what one should expect really in an actual similar test of their own but for fun I think it's a pretty decent figure let's uh, let's get to feeding these little guys I was just debating what we should give them um, right down to whether or not these old feeding zone indicators could potentially be reused as bedding down in the feeding area and I think we could do that because um, I just reminded myself that I've got a, a fairly decent sized collection going on of coffee filters and they're right here next to me so we'll give these little guys new coffee filters as their feeding zone indicators and we've got some prepared bedding of mine we can include in each system and then before we start piling in the foods we can sort of um, return some of this other bedding type materials I believe these were just used napkins which is what we wanted to get rid of last time so those became part of our foundational bedding before we fed last time and another thing we've been doing with these threads, at least just in the interest of keeping worm activity on them, was to always sort of include them smack in the middle of the, the food that's being placed in here. It's just that the foods are frozen. I almost feel bad putting all these little wormies that are still occupying these threads onto frozen foods. Spread these out a little bit and maybe they'll recede down out of the threads down into the material below and then we'll have a um, Fewer number of worms that need to be shocked by the cold <laughs> So I, I think they're just fine. Though. I don't think there's a, any real 
reason for concern as far as the cold goes. Um, they'll be just fine. So this is a very um, colorless kind of check-in today, right? Everything in here looks kind of brown. I mean, at one point these banana peels would have actually not been so boring in color. They would have been nice bright yellow, but having been in my freezer for who knows how long, they just sort of take on this very brown and boring color. And mixed in with this potato, you can see a little bit of green. A lot of people already know, but in case you don't, the, um, the green in the skin of the potato is not the best thing for you from what I understand, but I don't know the exact details of what the problem with it is. But um, I think if you do see green on your potato peels, you're supposed to get rid of it. And it kind of makes me wonder, does that mean I should not be giving it to the worms? Or does it matter? I sure hope it's not an issue. I hope I don't just find out in the comments that I should not have done it. But I'm going to just give them this potato peel, which is possibly not ideal as far as human consumption goes. But somehow the worms have a, a seemingly broader interest in things that they're willing to eat so I figured right between the banana peels and the potato peel could come possibly the last round for the synthetic threads which might have a little bit of tiny bit of cotton remaining in them that still needs to be done away with but it is hard to believe at this point that if we were to come back in here in another 10, 12 or so days, then that we would, you know, we would find any cotton in there at all. Um, I think we are just kind of leaving it in there as sort of a victory lap because the test, I believe, is done, <laughs> and then we could, uh, then we could maybe do the extraction of the synthetic materials from the system and make it a little bit more official. But for now, just for fun, let's um, let's just go ahead and leave it in there for one last hurrah. Let's begin covering up. I'm going to use this as a reason to just kind of till up the outer edges to see how things look. Introduce a little bit of air into the material, fluff it up a bit. It's always nice to see how the stuff is populated with worms. Even though you're feeding down the center pretty much every time for who knows how long, it's um, still a really popular place for the worms to be hanging out over on the edges. In some cases, I don't know, I think I had a really popular feeding in one of my previous bins from not too long ago where it did seem like I found the majority of the worms that live in the system huddled near the center of the bin probably still just trying to polish off the feeding I gave them previously even though I had this feeling like there could have been no leftovers since enough time appeared to have passed to let that stuff all get consumed and broken down but who knows sometimes it's a little bit tricky to tell yeah, you know, it's interesting. Some of the stuff I just sort of tilled up off the very bottom did feel kind of like it was in a big thick block and it seemed like um it seemed like a good candidate for being sort of broken open a little bit. So I think I just spread a little bit of the potato out of the feeding area when I was covering up there. So let's see if we could do about allowing the feeding to remain where I put it. It's just Check out the outer edges over here closer to me and we'll be finished. Let these little guys get back to work. See here too. Pretty popular material despite being kind of the furthest away from the feeding zone. Sometimes I wonder if what we're doing here is almost like a accidental setup. Just by, you know, disrupting the center of the bin to make space and to add the newest feeding. Are we in a way priming the outskirts of the system for an exciting worm spotting later? by sort of driving them out there anyway. That was just a little thought that I had, but I wasn't sure. Sometimes it does seem like this, this um, what's the word? Regardless of the, sorry, I just had to reach down to the ground and get the little piece of material that I dropped. So sometimes it does seem like regardless of where you begin checking, Sometimes maybe you'll check the outskirts of the system just to be sure. Maybe that's where you'll actually end up finding a whole lot of worms for whatever reason. But here too, I think the material feels pretty dense. I don't think it's a problem per se, because you can see there's a whole bunch of worms in it too. So even though it's sort of um, become compacted, 
since it's been a while since I last aerated it, it um it does seem to be a place where the worms are quite happy to be hanging out because there's just so many of them in this stuff. Got a good moisture content to it th um, too throughout the whole system. And now I think we're ready to come in with our nice brand new brand new used <laughs> coffee filters. Used from the perspective of being a coffee filter but brand new in terms of its new meaning in life. Feeding zone indicator. All right, one goes here, and the other goes here, and we're finished. So let's get the uh, covers back on here. Sometimes I'll put, you know, newspaper or other sort of top coverings out onto the surface of the material. Sometimes I'll spread leaves. Sometimes I'll do nothing. Sometimes I'm just in the mood to switch things up and not be so much a creature of habit. Perhaps that's the only reason I changed the uh, things that I'm doing from time to time because variety is the spice of life. All right, everyone, that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.